to Hi, GDR here in a beautiful sunset in Jamaica with fading light going down. I just thought as the sun goes down, we might take a look at some of the quotes that I've been sending out to you guys. Thank you very much for the response to these quotes that I send out. You know, I don't think I'm the last middle or first word on anything. It's, I just say these things. I write these things down. If people like it, good. If they don't agree with it, that's also good. So a lot of people have been responding as we post some of the quotes, these things I come up with. Some of them, of course, are in Chandram, some in the mountain shadow. I got a few here that I thought, okay, these are some recent ones because you've been asking me, where do these quotes come from and, and sort of how do I put them together? So I got some here in my notebook. My friend Ben gave me this book. I recommend for all you guys, I think we're getting to a time soon when I'm gonna to say to someone, you know, I read that in a book and they'll say, you know what? Because books are sort of vanishing and doing this writing by hand in your journal like this is not something that's sort of done much anymore. But for anyone who likes doing it, I recommend it keep it up because you know what? The journal itself is a work. It's in itself a little work of art. As you fill it up, as these pages get filled up with your writing and your text and the thing is finished, when it either goes into your own archive of your material, of your work, or it makes a gift for someone you really cherish to say, here you go. In my case, when this is full, I give it back to the guy who gave it to me as a gift. So he'll receive it. So <laughs> how do I work out some of these quotes? All right, let's take a look. Hope you can still see me in the fading light here. As an example of how I work it out, sometimes I sit down, find myself a nice quiet spot, get in the right state of mind, and then I think about a word or a thought or a concept or an idea. And I think, yeah, what really is that? And I start digging in it and finding some truth in it. I know that no matter what I come up with, it's only ever gonna be a fragment. But if you get enough fragments of, the, of that thing, of the truth of it, then eventually you get a pretty good grip on it, I think, in one way or another. So what I started with this time, these are reasons I just did these today. I was thinking about fair, honest, positive, and creative, the four keys to leading a kind of ethical life. If in everything you do and everything you start in life and everything you take on and your relationships, if you're fair, you're honest, you're positive, and you're creative, as opposed to unfair, dishonest, negative, and destructive, if you're fair, honest, positive, and creative, and can tick all four boxes, keep going. If you can't tick all four of those boxes, go back and figure it out until you can. So I was thinking about that and I thought, okay, let's start with those words. So I started on fair and what I ended up with was fairness is not a principle, it is an instinct. Now, what does that mean and why would I write that? Fairness is not a principle, it's an instinct. I believe that fairness comes from our ancient, ancient ancestors. The first 250,000 years of our history as gatherer hunters, where the net set, the small subset of virtues and principles were born in our love for each other and our caring and sharing. Fairness is born in us then. Not so much in this modern world in which we live because there's not that much fairness around, as we all know. But it was born then. And I, that's why I think it's an instinct in us. No matter 25,000 years of domesticated so-called civilization, competition, dog eat dog, every man for himself, 25,000 years of that has not erased within us a lust for fairness and ineffable desire for justice and fairness. And that comes from our ancient past when we were much more fair and much more caring, much more sharing with one another. And I think that's why for me it's an instinct, not just a principle, it's very deep in us. I think we made it. Humans, it's born and crucible of our humanness, of our human nature. All right. So now with honesty. <laughs> honesty is one of the most beautiful forms of love I wrote here. Now, I went down a pathway of what honesty is and it kept taking me back to honesty in relationships, Honesty in context, honesty in connection with other people, honesty with the divine, honesty with nature. It took me back into this and each time I went into that, it always, if we were truly honest, we would be expressing it in a form of love. Our dishonesty with nature is what, what's causing this. Our lack of love for our own planet is growing and it's all over the world getting bigger and bigger and better. The movement is growing and it's completely unstoppable. We will get into this and we will fix it and we will change things. 
but that lack of love up to this point is what's caused that. If I, and so for me, I went down that avenue and I ended up with honesty is one of the most beautiful forms of love. And for me, that's okay, that's one more little fragment on what is honesty. So then we went to fair, honest, positive. I started going down all sorts of avenues for what the word positive means, but you know, eventually what really made me understand it more clearly was when I went into the negative. And I started thinking about, you know, I was thinking negativity that I've had in my, than when I've been negative with other people, with situations, when I've seen things through a negative lens. And other people I've met in my life who see things always in a glass, not half full or half empty, but a, a glass completely empty, broken, useless, and no good to anyone. And uh, so that kind of thing. And I, I, I thought, what is it about that? What, what is it that crushes the spirit in it? And, and so on. Where does it come from? And when I went into it, really, the more I saw, and the more deeply I went into negativity, the more I saw this really as a form of fear. That negativity that is a that the people who are really positive are relatively fearless in what they do. They're filled with courage and faith in what they do, positive people. And negative people very often are coming from a, pl a place deep within of fear. So I said in this, negativity is fear wearing a disguise, if you know what I mean, just to sort of have a little bit of a think about it. But now you know how I was getting there when I got to that. And with creativity, I've been fair, honest, positive, creative. With creativity, I put creativity as nature speaking within. Basically, when I started thinking about, of course, absolute creativity is really a divine characteristic. We don't really create anything. We may bring things into being, but we don't really create in that sense. But as we use the word for creative art and creative expression, okay, we, what do we mean when we say we create something when we, and so on? Where does that, what is it, what is creative inspiration? Where is the wellspring of something that makes you jump up and go, oh my God, I've got to do this right now and nothing can stop you until you get that tune out or you write that paragraph or you create that collage or you get that dance routine and you go, that's it, that's the one I've been trying to get for the last like three years. That moment of creative burst of what is it? For me, I looked around me when I was thinking about it and I thought, what am I looking at? I'm looking at trees, at I'm looking at hummingbirds, I'm looking at doves, crows, at bees, at wasps, I'm looking at flowers blooming everywhere around me, and I sort of filled me, this is what creativity is. It's nature speaking to us within, inside us. And I think once in our ancient past, getting back to that ancient gatherer-hunter history, I think once we probably did listen more intently to nature, and nature spoke more eloquently to us than it does today. But that's why, why I came up with creativity is nature speaking within. So that's just a little insight into the process I use when I'm sitting back. And everybody does this, I'm sure. And anyone who hasn't even tried it that way can sit back and think it through and think, what is that thing? And go deep and then come up with something that's your own. Each little splinter or fragment of truth adds up to the whole diamond, which is all of us, all of us and all that we know. So blessings and love from Jamaica. Make up your own wisdom as you go and collect every wise thing that you know or that you hear, especially from grandmothers. They know so much. Big love from Jamaica. Bless up, bless up. GDR out.